Well, welcome to Chapter 11 of Head First JavaScript Programming. In Chapter 10, you saw that functions are values, just like any other values in JavaScript. You could store functions in variables and pass them to other functions and return them from functions. In this chapter, we dive even further into the world of functions. We take a look at three related concepts, anonymous functions, scope, and closures. As you can guess from the title of the chapter, these are serious topics. They can be tricky to wrap your head around, so take some time going through the chapter. Go slowly and try things out as you go, as always. We start out by looking at anonymous functions. At first, anonymous functions might seem like they're just a shorthand way to set up event handlers, but as you'll see throughout the chapter, they're actually much more than that. Whenever you assign an anonymous function to a variable, you're creating a function scope. A function scope is just a way to define when and where variables are defined in your program. As we talked about way back in Chapter 3 when we introduced functions, we have both global and local variables. Local variables are defined only within the function they're in, so the function creates a local scope, and anything that's defined in that function is only visible in that function. But what about the scope of functions themselves? That is, when and where you can use a function. Earlier, we said functions are visible everywhere. But now we refine that just a bit and see that how you define a function with a function declaration or a function expression determines where your function is visible. We step you through how to know when and where your functions are defined and how that affects the scope of your variables. Next, we tackle lexical scope. This is just the full name for the scope that we've been using all along, but now you're in much better position to understand what it all means. Pay very close attention to these pages, because understanding lexical scope is the key to understanding closures, which are coming up next. Now here's where we pull a lot of things together that you've already learned. You know from Chapter 10 that a function is a value, and we can do things like assign a function to a variable or an object property, or return a function from a function. And you know from Chapter 3 and from this chapter what scope is and how it works, and how where variables are defined determines where they're visible, that is, where you can use them in your code. Well, these are the ingredients you need to understand closures. Closures are just a way you can capture the value of a variable in a function and have access to that value later. Closures are much more difficult to explain in words than they are to understand, but getting through all the words in the description can be confusing. If you struggle in this section, don't worry. Everyone struggles with closures at first. But hopefully, you'll have that aha moment when you see what's happening. As usual, we've got plenty of pictures, examples, and exercises to help you get through it. Be sure to do the exercise at the bottom of page 495. It's crucial to understanding closures. Once you've wrapped your head around closures, we end with a couple of fun exercises to help all this sink in. And then, of course, it's the bullet points to sum everything up and a crossword to burn it into your brain. As always, be sure to do all the exercises. We learn by doing, so this is where the real learning is happening. And once you've done all that, we'll see you in Chapter 12.